Okay, honestly, I haven't read these messages for a while, so I'm pretty sure this is the order. But anyway, like, messages. It's through Snapchat. We were talking something before, and I didn't save the messages, but he was saying, like, something how I was basically tripping. And I said, dude, I swear to God, that's not the point. He goes, yo, text my phone. What, why, what? Okay, Selene, I'm not going to argue with you. I said, so basically, he was like, so basically, you done right? I said, dude, I told you no one stopped multiple times and you kept going. You didn't respect me. Why does it matter? You didn't care when you just wanted to feel good for you. You could care less how I felt. And that's facts, pretty much. <laughs> All right. He responds with, okay, I said, sorry, girl. Godly, don't have no dang heart attack because of this. Chill out. Man, don't even worry about it. If you, you want to go, I can't make you stay. Like I said, I'm sorry. And wherever it goes then that's how it's going to be. And he goes, and I bet all them other, he uses the N word. Um, wouldn't it still be trying? Was she thinking about that old in the past crap? I said, how are you trying, Seth? I was about to say his name for a second. Oh, crap. Yeah. <laughs> ain't nothing else more to say. Like you said, I just respected you. You ain't good on my part. I said, yeah, I didn't want that at all. He goes, I understand. I said, I'm just not going to respond to that. He goes, I, I guess you can just text me when you're ready. I, he said, blah, 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 blah. sorry. He said, I, I guess you can just text me when you're ready. I, how many times do you got to say I? Okay, let me stop commenting to what he's saying. All right, what he said. I said, ready for what? To be disrespected again? Did you even like me or did you just want to hit like your bros did? At any time when you were doing what you did, did you ever think that this will F me up mentally again? Because you kind of know my past. Does the word stop mean anything to you? Do you know when a girl says stop at any time that can be classified as rape? And I told you, I don't like to, I'm going to leave that part out, but you made me. So ready for what? To just be your sex toy? Which again, I should have been smarter. You wanted to F. That's exactly what you said in our messages. I guess I was too dumb to just think you just wanted to show. He goes, what would any of them, in words again, want to chill all the time with you? Would any of them do anything I did? F no. I said, dude, we ain't talking about any other I put it in quotes because I, like I said before, I don't use this word. And when I'm quoting someone of the words that they choose, I put it in quotes. I said, correction, boy, besides you. Like, real talk, you may say one thing, but you have done other actions to show me that you ain't that different from them. I feel like my ghetto kind of came out right now because, like, my grammar didn't make the most perfectest, perfectest, see, I can't even talk, didn't make the best sense, but, yeah. He goes, okay, Selena. And that was that. I didn't text him back after that. Now it continues on to the day that I reported it. I reported it September 10th when I saw him at my homecoming dance. Mind you, he doesn't even go to my school. So I was so confused why he was there. I was like, oh my gosh, is he looking for me? Like, is, does, is he why is he here like he doesn't go to my school so I was flipping crap and at this time only two people knew that I've told and one person I didn't even want to tell but um she was kind of there and she was talking to me and then I just broke in class and then I ended up telling her and I was semi close to her but a lot happened with that person we didn't go and give her a name because that's another day for another story and this other guy that I had at the time, he was like my best guy friend and I told him what happened to me so he knew what was happening. I see him and I freak out. And so I'm asking people, I'm like, hey, okay, so my best friend's name is going to be um, Nick. So Nick, I'm asking, where is Nick? I'm like, dude, where is Nick? Like, I need to talk to Nick. Where is Nick? And they're just like, he's not, he's with his girlfriend. Like, I don't know where he's at. And so I'm freaking out. And I was like, I need Nick. And they're like, okay, what's happening? Like, why are you freaking out? Just calm down. Like, we don't know what's going on with you. But, you know, pretty much like, this is a dance. Can you uh, chill out? <laughs> I finally find Nick. And I'm telling Nick, I'm like, Nick, he's here. And he was like, are you serious? Like, where is he? And I point him out. And the first thing he says, I remember, he was just like, wow, okay, that dude is really tall. And I was like, yes, I know. I just go into this complete trance. Like, at this time, like... I am not really in reality. Like, I feel like I was doped up on some drugs or something because I was totally zoned out of reality. So I go, I get in my car, and I drive off. At this time, my mom came home that night before because we went to the airport and got her. And I, I am not 
someone that really gets that emotional when I see a parent that I haven't seen for a long time. Like I am emotional as it is already as a person, but I don't get the type of emotion that I did that day when I saw my mom. I'm closer to my mom than I am with anybody else. And I just wanted my mom, like I just wanted to feel safe. And my mom is the one that I feel safe with the most. So I go to go see where she's at and I we finally get that message that she just landed. My head was everywhere. I was just trying to listen to my music, get my mind off everything. And this is in the same night as the homecoming. So don't get the, those two days mixed up. And I see her and I literally rushed to her like I was separated at birth from her. I embraced her so much. Like I was just hugging her and I was just like, I missed you so much and I was bawling. She's left before and I've never reacted like this when I saw her. So she knew something was up but she didn't really know. Back to homecoming night. So I get home and I go straight to my room. So she comes into my room and she was like, baby girl, what's wrong? Like what's happening? And wow, um, I look up to her and I said, I'm sorry. She goes, what are you sorry about? I said, I didn't want to tell you. She said, tell me what? And I said, mom, this is what happened to me when you were gone. When I saw her face, when I said that, it made me break so much more. And I just let everything out. And at that time, I finally felt like I was set free from something that I was keeping from my parents, let alone only a few people knew. And I was like, mom, like, I don't know what to do. And she was like, oh, we're gonna get this guy. Like, who is it? And I was like, I don't wanna tell you the person. Like at first I didn't tell her the person because I knew my dad knew this person. So it's like, I don't want to tell you because I was scared. I was like, like my dad knows this person. Like, I don't know what my dad would do. Not saying like he's about to go like murder this guy, but you know, who whose dad won it pretty much. It was kind of that type of scenario. Like you just touched my daughter and you did this to my daughter. I called the cops that night and I reported and I had to tell my story to two cops that were there. It was like a woman and a man and they were asking me questions and stuff, of course, you know, investigating. And they asked me if I still had the clothes from that day. And I was like, no, I don't. I don't know. I forgot what I was wearing. I just remember I was wearing leggings. I don't remember like the panties I was wearing or anything like that. And have you took a shower since that day? And I said, yeah, of course I have. I guess they thought that day is when it happened. And I was just like, no, yes, I've taken a shower. So we didn't hear from the cops for a couple weeks. And then I get a call. We're going to call him Mr. Curry. We're going to call him Mr. Curry. So Mr. Curry is like my detective. Come to this building. This look is this location. And I need you to tell your story again. So we can get a written statement down and all that. An investigation is being done. And at this entire time, like I had to stay silent. I couldn't tell anybody. And they told me like if I have already told people not to say anything more. So um, the people that I already told were like just a couple of my close friends. I did have a list of the people that I told because I knew like if it went out, like I was gonna know who told. Long story short, I didn't have enough evidence because clearly the evidence that was on my phone, like the messages, he tried to plead that it wasn't him that was texting me and all that. And this email, this email, can't really see it. Yeah, I can't show you because it has the name. It says his name in it. So I'm going to read you the email. It says, I've concluded my investigation to include speaking to Seth and reference to these allegations. One issue that we came up that he was 17, year old, 17 years old when this incident occurred and turned 18 shortly after. This issue with that is that at age 17, the incident falls in the juvenile court system. The juvenile court system is for the rehabilitation of juveniles, I probably said that wrong, but my bad, of juveniles in an attempt to prevent them from continuing their behaviors into adulthood. First of all, I don't care if this guy just turned 18. He knows what he did when he was 17, like this, email like you don't understand the amount of destruction it caused on my heart when I read it I was so furious I was like are you serious right now like so many of these people want 
girls or boys to come out about what happened to them, but the juvenile system can't even freaking do anything. I was so ticked. He says, with him now being 18, he does not fall under the realm of the juvenile court. When I interviewed Seth, he denied all allegations. Of course he did. <sighs> also, Seth advised that the screenshots that I showed him, the messages were not from him. I have done all that I feel that I could be that could have been done. I offered a polygraph to Seth and he refused to take one. I cannot force him to take one. I wonder why he didn't take it. I stood with the district attorney's office in reference to this case and that they have declined prosecution based upon the inability to cooperate uh, to cooperate the statements made. To cooperate, cooperate, yeah. The differentiation of statements between the victim and sus um, suspect and the lack of supporting evidence. So basically, long story short, I cannot go to court because I didn't have enough evidence because the messages weren't enough and I didn't have a rape kit and I didn't report it until a couple of days after. So yeah, that is basically the sum of that day, how I met the person, um, how I met Seth, and when I reported it and how I didn't get justice served to me because I didn't report it immediately after and I didn't have enough evidence. So yeah, stay tuned for the next video. The next video will be mainly about what I used to like post on Snapchat and also it will be about the aftermath, like things I had to face and things that I struggled with for a long time that most people didn't know like they could see it they could see a dramatic difference between my behavior but they didn't understand what was happening so yeah stay tuned for that video and until then i will see you later